Well, good morning, Christ Church. It is so good to be with you this morning, whether you're worshiping with us in person, worshiping online, or by way of Christ Church Radio. It has been a great day with our children singing this morning with the beautiful anthem by our choir. It is hard to follow those acts, but I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, before I do, however, let's pause for a moment of prayer. Would you pray with me? Gracious Lord, we do give you thanks for the gift of this day for each person gathered in this sacred space, whether in person, online, or by way of radio. We pray that your Holy Spirit, which is present with us, might surround us and be our teacher as we reflect on today's scripture text. We ask all of these things in the name of Christ, who is our Savior and our Lord. Amen. So you gotta love the story about the pastor who was invited to lead a marriage retreat at her church. Uh, she began the retreat by asking the participants if they knew what the Bible actually says about marriage. Uh, one woman immediately raised her hand and said, the Bible says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. <laughs> well, it is wedding season. And in fact, last night I performed my third wedding in four weeks. And the truth is, most of the people that I marry have absolutely no idea what they're getting into. As a result, I thought today might be a good day for us to continue our Ancient Wisdom for Modern Families worship series with a message that focuses on some ways that I believe our faith says we can fortify, we can strengthen our marital relationships. Now, I recognize the fact that not everyone who is listening today, worshiping with us today, wants to be or is married. I know some of you are divorced, uh, some of you are widowed, and some of you are single by choice, and you thank God every day. If that's you, however, no worries. I've got good news for you. Uh, next week, we'll be sharing a message that focuses on some wisdom that our faith actually offers folks who happen to be single. So invite your friends and come back and be with us next week. If you happen to be single, however, I do hope that you'll still listen to today's message. That's because much of what I'm going to share this morning uh, not only applies to our marital relationships, it actually applies to all of our interpersonal relationships. Uh, relationships between parents and children, brothers and sisters, friends, co-workers, and especially brothers and sisters in our community of faith. So here's the question. What does our faith have to say that can help us fortify, strengthen our marriages and all the other relationships we're involved in in our daily lives? Well, based on this morning's scripture text, which are actually used at a lot of weddings, uh, but were actually written to help Christians in the early church strengthen their relationships, there are four important things. Four things I want us to reflect on today. Uh, let me share them with you. Uh, first of all, to fortify, to strengthen our marriages, we have to be willing to grow. We have to be willing to grow. Do you remember how Paul put it near the end of our reading from 1 Corinthians 13? Uh, Paul said this, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became an adult, well, I gave up my childish ways. I believe part of what Paul means here is to fortify, to strengthen our relationships. We have to be willing to grow. We have to be willing to change. And we also have to be willing to allow those we're in relationship with to grow and change as well. Now, I'm not a marriage and family therapist, but over the years I've done a lot of premarital counseling. And one of the things that I always tell couples that I'm about to marry is this. You need to understand the person you're getting ready to marry will not be the same person next year or in 10 years or in 30 years. That's because human beings are dynamic beings. In other words, we're always changing, we're always growing, we're always being reshaped in a thousand different ways. So if you want to strengthen, if you want to fortify your marriage, you've got to be willing to change and grow just as your partner does. Now, let me see if I can illustrate this with an example from my own marriage. Uh, this month, Pam and I will celebrate our 38th wedding anniversary. She is a patient woman. Now, I gotta tell you, on the day that we got married, I weighed 148 pounds. I had light brown hair, and my face was as smooth as a baby's bottom. As you can see, however, these 38 years later, I'm pushing 200. 
My hair has turned from brown to gray to Shekinah glory white. And my face, well, it's more like a piece of scruffy steel wool. See, the point is, in many ways, I am not the man Pam married 38 years ago. I have changed. Of course, Pam has changed over these 38 years as well. She's slimmer. She looks younger. And she's more beautiful than she was on the day I married her. As you can see, I've grown in wisdom as well. <laughs> Seriously, throughout our 38 years of marriage, Pam and I have grown and changed physically, psychologically, spiritually. Our careers have changed. Our place of residence has changed. Our family has changed. We've gone from a young couple with no children to being middle-aged parents with two growing boys to being grandparents with four wonderful grandkids. Pam and I are literally not the same people who stood at that altar on June the 29th, 1985. And the truth is, in order to fortify our marriage, to strengthen it, to help not only survive but thrive, our relationship has had to grow and change through the years as well. And I can honestly tell you that's not always been easy. It's not always been comfortable. It's not always been fun. But I can tell you also that our commitment to change and grow with one another has made an incredible difference in our relationships. A number of years ago, Madeline Lingo, who's one of my favorite authors, wrote a book entitled Marriage, a Two-Part Invention. Reflecting on her own marriage, she says this, Our marriage has been anything but static. There have been times when one of us, sometimes me, sometimes my husband Hugh, has outrun the other. When this has happened, we've had to wait patiently for the other to catch up. She says, I don't believe there's any marriage where this doesn't happen. For growth of love is not a straight line. It's this series of hills and valleys and twists and turns. And in every marriage, there will be times when it seems like our love for each other is over. What we've discovered, however, is if we're willing to stick with it, if we're willing to stay flexible, allow our relationship to take new forms, these desert times simply become a way to the next oasis. Here's the point. People are dynamic. As long as they're alive, they're going to change and grow physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And if our relationship with them is going to not only survive but thrive, we have to be willing to change and grow as well. That's the first thing I think our faith says about strengthening our marital relationship. Second, however, to fortify, to strengthen our marital relationships and all the other relationships in our lives, we've got to groom it. In other words, we've got to be willing to invest our time and our energy and our resources in our relationship each and every day. Somebody put it like this, falling in love is easy. Growing in love is work. And that's true, isn't it? I mean, few things in life get better without work. For example, if we want to have a beautiful garden, we got to do the hard work of planting and tilling and cultivating it. If we want to have a successful business, we got to do the hard work of putting in the time and the energy to build it up. We want to be in good physical shape. We've got to be willing to put in the hard work of exercise and eating right. The point is, the things that we ignore, well, they tend to deteriorate. While the things that we intentionally put effort into, well, they can, with God's help, get better and better and better over time. And what's true for everything else in life is also true for marriage. If you and I don't invest in our marital relationships, if we don't give them our best time and energy and resources, they will deteriorate. Author Aaron Beck, who's done a lot of writing and research on the topic of marriage, says there are really two basic ways that marriages become unhealthy and fall apart. Listen to what he says. Some marriages end with big exits in which one partner says or does something so dramatic, so destructive, the relationship is damaged beyond repair. The more common way for marriages to fall apart, however, is through a thousand 
little exits. Little exits are those subtle, quiet, barely noticeable ways in which partners begin to move away from each other. It comes with that constant series of unkind jabs, or too much focus on our kids or our career, or engaging in a lifestyle that's way too busy to nurture our relationship with our partner. In dozens of ways, we we tend to take these little exits and avoid focusing our best time and energy and resources on our relationship. And then one day, one day when we've taken enough of these little exits, we wake up and we wonder why we're so distant, so separate, so disengaged from our partner or spouse. Sadly, by that point, he says, it may be too late. Look, if you and I want to fortify, strengthen our marital relationship or any long-term relationship we're in, we've got to invest our best time and energy and resources in it. We need to find ways to nurture it each and every day. And some of these ways can be so simple. I mean, we can actually have dinner without our cell phone on. Can you believe that? Or we can take a short walk together before or after we begin our work day. We can schedule date night on a regular basis. We can share a cup of coffee or a glass of wine together at the end of the day just to check in and see how things are going. Galatians 6, 7 says, we reap what we sow. So the fact is it's important to sow a lot of healthy moments into our marriage each and every day. Third, if you and I want to strengthen or fortify our marital relationship, it's really important for us to approach it with some grit. Now, when I was a kid, one of my favorite movies was True Grit with John Wayne. Anybody see it? I'm not talking about the 2006 version with Jeff Bridges, not good enough. If you saw the movie, John Wayne starred as Rooster Cogburn, this tough, overweight federal marshal who was willing to do anything, go through any hardship, face any danger to get his man. Well, the movie True Grit reinforced Webster's Dictionary definition of grit, which is a firmness of mind or spirit that displays unyielding courage in the face of hardship or danger. Let me tell you, every marital relationship and every relationship of any other kind is going to encounter times of hardship and difficulty and danger at some point. As the 16th century mystic uh, Meister Eckhart put it, marriage is as beautiful as heaven and as hard as hell. (laughs) And the fact is, to get through those tough times, those difficult times, those times that pose danger to our relationship, we have to be like Rooster Cogburn. We have to have some true grit. Now, we have to have this level of commitment that says we're going to hang in there in these moments, even when the going gets tough. I'm reminded of a story about the late Billy and Ruth Graham. A a reporter once asked Mrs. Graham if at any point during their 63-year marriage, she considered divorcing Billy. Well, Ms. Graham uh, paused for a moment, and she said, well, you know, I've never considered divorcing Billy, but I considered killing him a number of times. (laughs) Look, there are going to be moments in our marriages where we don't feel like being married. On those days, we've got to hang in there. Recognize that marriage takes more than romantic feelings. It takes some commitment. It takes some true grit. As Paul says, love endures all things, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, refuses to give up, or at least refuses to give up easily. Now, having said that, Let me also say that having grit does not mean staying in a relationship that's abusive or completely unhealthy. God does not want us to stay in relationships that are destroying us. And some of you have been involved in those kinds of relationships. And the truth is the gritty thing for you to do was to get out of that relationship. But that should be the exception and not the rule. This leads to the fourth thing. 
to fortify and strengthen our marital relationships, we got to be willing to offer grace, right? I mean, anybody who's ever been in a relationship over a period of time knows there's going to be moments of conflict. Times when one person says or does something that aggravates or hurts or injures the other in some way. For example, a few months ago, a friend of mine told me a story about a, a married man who left from work one Friday afternoon. And instead of going home, he decided to squander the weekend and his paycheck partying with his buddies. When he finally returned home on Sunday night, his wife said, how would you like it if you didn't see me for a couple of days? The guy said, that will be just fine. Well, Monday came and went, and he didn't see his wife. Tuesday came and went, and he didn't see his wife. Wednesday came and went, and he still didn't see his wife. On Thursday morning, however, the swelling went down just enough <laughs> so that he could see her out of the corner of his eye. Okay, that's one way to handle conflict, <laughs> not the healthiest way. Paul reminds us there's another way. He says love is not easily offended. It doesn't always insist on its own way. It looks out for the other. Love doesn't keep a record of wrongs, but rejoices in the right. To fortify, to strengthen our marriage. Paul says we've got to address conflict. We've got to deal with it. But ultimately, we have to offer forgiveness. We have to offer one another grace and move on. Finally, to fortify, to strengthen our marriages, we've got to have faith in God. See, the love that Paul is talking about in this morning's scripture text, this love that enables us to grow in our relationship and groom our relationship and have the grit that we need and offer grace to one another, well, it's not romantic love. It's agape love. It's a love that comes into our lives and flows through our lives and our relationships out of our connection to the Holy One. And the deeper our relationship with God is, the better our marital relationship and all the other relationships in our lives can become. I recently ran across an interview that was done a few years ago with President Jimmy Carter and his wife, Rosalind, who are nearing the end of their lives. President Carter and Rosalind have been married now 76 years. Anyway, in the interview, President Carter talked about the difference that his faith and, and Rosalind's faith in God had made in their marriage. I want you to listen to what President Carter said. He says, our marriage has not been immune from the problems that threaten most couples. In fact, throughout our marriage, we've encountered many trials and tribulations that were serious enough to threaten our relationship, to even bring it to an end. Throughout our marriage, however, despite our differing interests and our imperfections and our infrequent mistakes and our irresolvable differences, love has prevailed. This is due in part to our great faith in God who has given us the strength to assess our actions, to offer and receive forgiveness, and to honor our vows. It's also provided our relationship with a third party. His name is Jesus Christ. A person with whom we could share our most troubling crises through prayer, often as individuals and sometimes together. As you can see from President Carter's comments, having a deep faith in God does not mean we don't have to deal and grow with the changes that come in dynamic relationships. It doesn't mean our relationships will not encounter periods of trouble and trial and tribulation. It does not mean that we will not be hurt by the people that we're in relationship with or we will not say or do things that hurt them. What it does mean, however, is that a deep faith in God can fill us with agape love. A love that will give our relationships, particularly our marital relationship, the fortification and the strength it needs to last through those times. So how does our faith say we can fortify, strengthen our marriage and really all our relationships? By being willing to grow. By taking the time and effort to groom it, to approach it with a dose of true grit, 
to offer grace to one another when we need to, and to have a deep faith in a God who will fill us with agape love. As we come to our Lord's table this morning, my prayer is the presence of that living God will meet us here. And the power of God's Holy Spirit will not only fill our marital relationship, but all of our relationships with these things. That they may keep our relationships healthy and whole for years to come. Let's pray together. O gracious and merciful God, for the gift of marriage and the gift of all healthy relationships, we are so thankful. We know that sometimes we struggle with them, and so we're thankful for the wisdom of our faith, which offers us some ways to navigate the ups and downs and twists and turns of those relationships. We ask that as we prepare to come to your table this day, you might meet us here and strengthen us in whatever way we need, that our marriage and all of our relationships might be healthy and whole. We ask these things in Christ's holy name. Amen.